there guys, welcome to the meat shop. Thanks for clicking on. This video is part of a special video series inspired by you guys. I've been asked before for a recipe or sausage book, which I don't have, so I thought I would share my favorite book with you, which is Home Production of Quality Meats and Sausage by Stanley and Adam Marinsky. It is my favorite book. I think it's got great information in there for beginners and experts alike. And uh, to celebrate my favorite book, I reached out to Stanley Marinsky and he gave me permission to do Marinsky March. So we're going to do a recipe out of this book every day of March. And all the recipes and all the processes are right out of the book, which will be in the link below. That is, a link to the book will be in the description down below. So, without any further ado, let's get into Marinsky March. Hey there guys, we're gonna get another day going here in Marinsky March, and today on the agenda is Tasso, uh, out of page 546, if you're following along in the book. I'm really excited about this one. I picked this one out uh, because I've never had it before, and it sounds delicious. Uh, so reading a direct quote from Home Production of Quality Meats and Sausage, page 546, Tasso, intensely flavored and heavily smoked pork butt, adds a unique flavor to many Cajun dishes. Tasso is seasoned with cayenne pepper, garlic, and although it can be eaten alone, it is mainly used in vegetables, gumbos, and soups. So, uh, I got uh, the recipe here, guys. I got a couple pork butts. It calls for pork butts. We're going to cut them against the grain and apply this seasoning to them and let them sit in there for a few days. Let's see here, one inch thick strips, removing excess fat, uh, mix, coat strips on both sides, place in a container, refrigerate for two days. So it's gonna be kind of like a dry cured pork uh, or dry cured bacon kind of thing. And then we're gonna smoke it to a fully cooked temperature after, and it sounds like something maybe you'd fry up and put in uh, some beans or gumbos and stuff like that. So I got a couple pork butts here. Um, they're boneless pork butts and the processor I got them from kind of really went all out when they were taking that bone out, so they opened right up. Um, so it's gonna be difficult to cut them into strips. I mean, we still could, I guess. Maybe we'll try cutting this one into strips. Uh, so we'll do one into strips and I got the other one. This is just the capicola muscle, or I believe uh, it's sometimes called the collar muscle, but it's that really well marbled piece that kind of runs. It's an extension of the loin, the pork loin ribeye, kind of extends down into the shoulder. So I'm going to do one in that, I'm going to do one in this, taking off some excess of fat. That's what the recipe calls for. So this is just straight fat, knock that off. And here I got a little pile over here of uh, this kind of loose flat meat that I took off this one. I got it saved over here. We'll make that into sausage further into the month, of course. I'm going to take this down to a quarter inch. I'm going to save that fat for later. I know there's a couple other sausage recipes that call for it. So, well, you'll see it again. So there we go, guys. I'm going to cut that into strips, and then we're going to apply the seasoning. This kind of... So it's gonna hang on a bit over there, but that other one is basically just this muscle here you see. That's the capicola muscle. I'm gonna leave this fat cap on and we will uh, cut it in strips, one inch strips across the grain, following Stanley and Adam's recipe. Set that straight fat aside. Pork fat trimmed together. One inch strips, then I'll grab a weight off it all, use the recipe in the book, mix up the spices and apply it. So here we go. I think that's probably exactly one inch. Man, it's amazing I'm so good and humble. I wish I had some bone in one for you guys or ones that weren't quite so aggressively deboned, but that's what we're working with. Okay, so that's the, the longer strips with the tail on, if you will. So how about that? Dry cured, seasoned up with some Cajun-like seasonings and fried, boom. Yes, sir. Sign me up. Then we'll do the same with the pork collar guy. I'll just square the end up here. Take him down to a quarter inch. Knock this little bit of fat off. And same again. One inch little slabs here. As close as you can to an inch. Oh man, this one's got so much marbling. I'm so looking forward to this. 
Boom, future tasso. Look at that marbling. Yes, sir. All right, so we got it all slabbed up. Now we have to grab a weight off of it so we know what uh, amount of spices to mix up. Home production of quality meats and sausages. They have everything broke down into grams per kilogram and tablespoons and teaspoons and stuff. So it works for both imperial and metric. So for most everything I've been doing this month, guys, I've just been doing one kilogram batches, but uh, this one we're gonna do 4.2 kilograms. Cause I got a feeling I'm really gonna like this. So 4.2 kilograms. I'll go mix up the spices and I'll give you a little shot of that right before we mix them. All right, guys, we got those Cajun spices mixed up. There we go, guys, the tasso mix. Now, next step is to apply thoroughly and bag it. Okay, so just a nice even coat, like we're doing dry cured bacon, I'm assuming. And I, you know, they're gonna marinate for two days, I think the recipe says, so I don't think you gotta get ultra concerned about making sure you get every little nook and cranny on your pork butt, but uh, just get that seasoning all in there, toss them around, get them good and coated, whatever you got left over, throw into uh, your Ziploc bag, and it's gonna, that salt and cure is gonna draw meat out of, or meat, gonna draw liquid out of uh, your pork butts, and it's gonna kinda create its own little brine, if you will. Uh, in the book, I believe it says you, you can use a Ziploc bag tossed around in the freezer every couple days. I'm gonna use mine, uh, use a vacuum package bag for my stuff here, and just massage it, uh, in the morning and in the afternoon we're done in the shop. So I'll bag it up and pop it in the freezer. And there you go guys, there's a little shot of the tasso before I get it uh, put away into the vacuum package bags. Mm-mm, yummy. Here comes our tasso. Oh yeah, see you in a couple days. Yeah, so we're gonna pop it in the fridge, two days, massage it around every couple days. All right, I can't wait any longer. I gotta dive into this tassel. So, it's all up in this bag. It's all been vacuum packaged up in this bag, I should say. Uh, it did end up sitting a little longer than two days. The smokehouse has been super busy. So, uh, I think this is, uh, it was in here for four days in this vacuum package bag, which Shouldn't hurt it, it's nice fresh pork and just a little extra marinating time shouldn't be a problem. Oh yeah, it smells so good. So our next step guys is uh, to take it out of the bag, hang it up somewhere in the room, let it dry to two, three hours. I'm gonna put it on this rack here and pop it in my smokehouse to dry for a couple hours. In the book it says to use S hooks, but I don't really got enough of those little S hooks. So I'm gonna improvise and just place it out on this rack and dry it out for two to three hours. And then we're gonna hit it with smoke and increase the smoke. It's gonna be a heavily smoked product until it comes all the way to a finished, fully cooked temperature. There's those pieces, guys. And they've become much denser, much more firm. Oh, I'm so excited for these. I didn't even know about these until now. I've read that book a couple times and I never read the Tasso page. All right, I got the tassel on the rack, and I kind of had a thought here afterwards. I could have tied this pork shoulder up with strings and uh, sliced down in between each string, and those couple curing days would have uh, affixed these big pieces here that, uh, that are really stringy. They would have been a nice uniform shape, but oh well, next time I'm making tassel. So next step, I'm just going to set them in the smokehouse to dry for a couple hours, and then I'm going to start applying smoke. All right, a couple hours here, and then we're gonna start rolling the smoke. All right, so we got the chorice done here. It's smoking away. Nice, heavy smoke on them. So I'm gonna pull them guys out now and uh, get them cooling down. Looking yummy. All right, everybody. It is the next morning. Our tassels cooled down. We took it up to a fully cooked temperature in the smokehouse, and uh, these look awesome. They got a real nice dark mahogany color. I'm looking forward to these. They're gonna be kind of like, ooh, dry cured 
pork butt bacon with spicy kick. Let's just see what they look like here. Mm-hmm. So there's our tassel. That's kind of that copa muscle there uh, from the from the back. And I got some of these kind of bigger streaky guys too. But uh, let's cut into them and see how they look and taste. I got a feeling they taste pretty good. Mmm. Oh yeah, I got that nice cured color all the way through. I did end up giving them a couple extra days just uh, the way the smokehouse worked out, but these guys have some nice rich marbling in there. So I think they would be wicked good for stews and gumbos and baked beans. Oh wow, lots of smoke flavor right off the bat. Still nice and moist and creamy from all that marbling fat. Perfect amount of salt, not too salty. These are delicious, holy. I was really looking forward to these. I've never made these before. These would be so good in baked beans, cubed up in a little bit. Super good guys, and they're not overly spicy. I mean, there's a little bit of cayenne on there, but it's just nice, cayenne. It's just nice though, because uh, it kind of just warms the tongue up and opens the palate up to all the flavors. So there we go, guys. The nice pile of tasso bits. A little cross section of them here, guys. Look at that nice deep pink color from that cure. See a little bit of red on the outside from that cayenne and mahogany color from all the smoke. Look at that. Wouldn't that be tons of flavor inside your favorite baked bean recipe? I think so. Anyways, though, guys, this wraps up the Tasso episode. This is a really cool one. I'm glad I picked this one. Lots of flavor. I really like this one. I give this one two big thumbs up. And if you like the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And we'll be doing one of these a day for Marinsky March, right out of home production of quality meats and sausage. Thanks for watching, guys. Take care.